Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to An Academy where you can crack all NEET PG exams with us with our top educators, quality content and have a great learning experience. A little about me. I am Dr. Sasha Menin Remedius. I've done my MBBS from Father Muller Medical College, Mangalore. My MD in Anesthesia from Father Muller Medical College, Mangalore. I have two publications and one paper presentation in the field of anesthesia. And I've been working and teaching in Bangalore for the past two and a half years. So today's uh, topic is anatomical and physiological differences between an adult and a neonate. So uh, a little about Unacademy. It's one of India's largest online learning platform where you can get plus subscription and access to unlimited live and recorded courses all from India's best educators. Now, what do you get out of an Unacademy? So at Unacademy, we basically have our daily life classes. So when you go to a coaching institute, you have to get up in the morning, you have to get ready, you have to make the effort of getting to the place. Once you get there, it's a lot of, first of all, a lot of time and energy waste. Then once you even get there, then you have to see all about the place where you get to sit, whether you can get the educator's attention, whether you can hear the educator, whether the educator will be able to clear your doubt because these educators have a limited amount of time before the next educator comes in. It's not an ongoing thing where they can clear your doubts while talking. So it's very difficult for them to finish what they got to do and clear your doubts. Whereas at Unacademy, you can chat with your educator, engage in discussions, clear your doubts and answer polls. And all this is while the class is going on. Now at Unacademy, our courses are all structured. So they are all in line with your exam syllabus. So they best, uh, they, in the sense that uh, they are all uh, according to what you need from the exam point of view. So the educators have prepared them so that whatever is best for you all from the exam point of view, you all can uh, go about that. And uh, I mean, in the sense, you all can prepare on those lines and uh, Hence, crack the NEET PG. So, whatever is needed for you all from NEET PG point of view, the courses are prepared on those pieces. Now, live tests and quizzes. So, these tests will help you all evaluate your preparation. Uh, so, on a regular basis, we conduct. So, this evening too, I'll be conducting a quiz on a topic that I took recently that is oxygen therapy devices. So, based on that, you all can regularly, you know, evaluate how your performance has been, how you all have been going about it that and based on that you all can see where you all stand so we discuss the quiz too during the session so that you'll have a better idea of how to go then there's unlimited access so this one subscription can get you access to all our live and recorded courses and you can watch from wherever you are the devices so whether you're traveling or whether you're in the hostel you all can watch from the comfort of any of your devices these are some of our top educators on the platform. Dr. Nikita Nanwani, Dr. Mohammed Zam, Dr. Dinesh Mishra, Dr. P. Sharma. Dr. Nikita Nanwani is a NEET PG mentor for radiology as well as mnemonics and concept focusing on mass note topics. So mnemonics are very interesting, very nice uh, to know things. And if you all, if it really helps you all, then you all should go for it as it is really, really helpful and will take you all forward. But those of you who mnemonics doesn't help, it doesn't help everyone. Like it didn't help me much. So if it doesn't help everyone, it's not everyone's cup of tea. But for those of you who it helps, please guys, make your own mnemonics. That will be even more helpful. But listen to Dr. Nikita. She's really good with her mnemonics. So courses offered. Uh, so we have our batch courses. Uh, these are the various uh, courses offered uh, with, under various subjects. So I'll have around 19 subjects to cover as you can see on the screen. It's not that easy. I know but that's why we are here to help you all do your best. So now uh, from the point of view as you can see there are various uh, uh, subjects like uh, psychiatry, radiology, dermatology, anesthesia. You all didn't have to go into detail during your MBBS right. But over here what happens is you all need to go into a little bit of detail over here. Uh, so what happens with these things is uh so these uh courses are allotted 11 marks each right these subjects are allotted 11 marks each now from the pg point of view these 11 marks are very easy to score only if you all go through these subjects in whatever is required from the need pg point of view you all will not be able to answer these questions without going through the material for need pg because 
these topics are not very easy so you need to go through them from NEET PG point of view okay so that is what is important okay? so th that's what I'm trying to say is that you'll have to go through these topics so but they are easy level marks whereas the topics like physiology anatomy pharmacology those are a little on the tougher side because these courses are uh, your anatomy physiology but they are lot of 44 marks and you'll have spent a year for these subjects studying these subjects even they can ask you anything from impact with regards to these subjects these are some of the ongoing courses on the platform course in neurophysiology AI surgery Course in neurophysiology, GI surgery, cardiovascular thoracic surgery, capsule of larynx, respiratory system, etc. Now, as far as the subscription is concerned, there are five types of uh, subscriptions on your screen. Okay, so as you can see, there are five types of subscription. The six month subscription is excellent for those of you who are giving me this year. For the rest of you, the 12 and 24 months is good. Uh, so it's more economical because it's a one time subscription. So after six months, if you by chance don't want to give the exam or you don't want to, you know, uh, uh, I mean, you, you don't want that subject or you didn't clear the exam, whatever it may be. If you want to access the classes again, if you want to go through the test sheets again, you will have to subscribe again. So it's a waste of money, right? But with your 12 and 24 months, of course, you have that buffer time. That buffer time is all yours. It's right there for you. So uh, then again, this uh, time actually helps you prepare, actually helps you think about what you might want and what you might not want. So even though you have made up your mind on a particular subject, you might not actually enjoy the subject when you're studying it. So even enjoying the subject while studying is important. It's not only practical. So I agree during the preparation for NPG, you're not doing anything practically in all the subjects, but at least you know theoretically what this might offer you practically. So you might actually realize what you want and what you don't want. It is actually quite helpful to take that time off and decide because you will be doing this for the rest of your life. You need to enjoy what you do. Right, so you need to enjoy what you do. So that's what's important. So, uh, like you can see on the screen, like you can see on the screen, there are various types of subscriptions. And uh, another thing is, uh, not everyone can clear in, uh, not everyone can clear in, uh, you know, one day or two. I mean, one attempt. So you all might need some time there is no harm there is absolutely no harm in taking your time and giving your PG exam even two years or so whatever it is there is no harm in taking your time during your exams so as you can see on the screen to use my code SASHA you can avail a 10% discount So this is the 10% discount. The discount is applicable on the discount is applicable on all subjects. So you all can on all on all the types of subscriptions the discount is applicable.
So this is a 12 month. Nobody will ask you how long you all took your exam, etc. You all can take however much time you all want. So use my code at the bottom of the screen and say SHA to avail your 10% discount. Uh, so as you can see over here, like I said, the discounts are applicable. So today's topic is basically uh, differences between anatomical and physiological differences between a neonate and a child. So basically, infant is a child of up to infant is a child of up to 12 months of uh, age and uh, child is 1 to 12 years adolescent is uh, adolescent is 13 to 16 years and premature is less than 37 weeks and extremely premature is less than 28 weeks. Premature less than 37 weeks and extremely premature less than 28 weeks. So, airway and uh, respiratory system. So, basically, the airway and respiratory system they have a relatively large head, short neck, and a they have a large head, short neck, and a short prominent occipital. Right? The tongue is that is large for the mouth, and there is absence of teeth, so it is much easier to obstruct the airway. So the tongue is pretty large, and it can fall back. There is no teeth, and it can obstruct the airway. Uh, so large head, short neck. This has to be remembered. Large head, short neck, and short mandible larger head shorter neck short mandible prominent occiput so mask holding also becomes difficult the tongue is large and no teeth so neonates preferentially breathe through their nose because of the close proximity of the epiglottis to the soft palate so the epiglottis is very close to the soft palate so preferentially they prefer to breathe through their nose because of this mouth breathing occurs only during crying they are obligate nose breathers this is vital for vital for respiration during their feeding basically during their suckling so when the infant is suckling they have to breathe through the nose so that is why they are obligate nose breathers and this is also because of the close proximity of the epiglottis to the soft palate now the narrow nasal passages can get easily blocked by secretions. So they have narrow nasal passages that can easily get blocked by a lot of secretions. Nasal mucosa is very thin and can be damaged by a nasogastric tube or nasally placed endotracheal tube. So preferentially we avoid nasal intubations and suctioning has to be done very gently in neonates. 50% of airway resistance is from the nasal passages. So because they are so narrow and they can get easily blocked, fifty percent of the resistance is of airway resistance is from the nasal passages. The epiglottis is long, stiff, and omega shaped, and it flops posteriorly. Just a sec. The epiglottis is long, stiff, omega shaped, and soft posteriorly, angulated away from the axis of the trachea. The adult epiglottis is way broad. So, firstly, it is omega shaped.
so the epiglottis is omega shaped the larynx is located higher in the neck the larynx is located higher in the neck the vocal cords are angled These are the changes in the airway. Vocal cords are angled. Larynx is located higher in the neck. Glottis is uh, shaped differently and angled over the laryngeal inlet. So the lotus is angled over the laryngeal uh, in inlet and the narrowest portion is the subglottic region at the level of the cricoid cartilage. The narrow narrowest portion in an adult it is the glottis. Glottic region is the subglottic region. The level of cricoid Basically, see, so this is the pediatric airway, this is the adult airway, so this is the omega shaped epiglottis, right? And this it is angulated more anteriorly, the glottis, the narrowest portion of the subglottis part. So, basically, respiration is less efficient in uh, infants. The smaller diameter, so the, it has smaller diameter of airways. The smaller diameter of airways increases resistance to airflow. Then it has uh, the airway is highly compliant and not supported by surrounding structures. Highly compliant and poorly supported. So there is airway resistance because of small diameter of airways. Uh, the airway is highly compliant and not supported by surrounding structures. Chest wall is also highly compliant, therefore the ribs provide little support for the lung, lungs. So the chest wall too is highly compliant. Little support from the ribs. There is little support from the ribs and therefore neg negative because of these two points negative intrathoracic pressure is poorly maintained thus uh, there is so because of these two points negative intrathoracic pressure
is poorly maintained. And closure of airways occurs with each breath. So there will be closure of airways with each breath. So oxygen consumption. Uh, is 2 to 3 times higher in preterm infants and the work of breathing is approximately 3 times that in adults and this work can be can significantly increased by you know certain cold stress uh, or any degree of airway obstruction so in preterm infants the oxygen demand is 3 times increased the work of breathing is uh, 3 times in adults because the oxygen demand is oxygen uh, consumption is also 2 to 3 times more uh, another important composition, another important thing is the composition of the, so alveoli increase in number, so alveoli will increase in number up till the age of 8 years. Number and size up to 8 years. Now another important factor is the composition of diaphragm. And intercostal muscles. So the composition of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. So the these muscles do not achieve the adult configuration of the type 1 muscles until the child is 2 years of age. Okay, type 1 muscles, uh, type 1 muscle fibers basically provide the ability to perform and repeat exercise. So repetitive exercise and your diaphragm and intercostal muscles is repetitive exercise that is performed by the type 1 Di muscle fibers but these uh, maturity of these fibers is not reached until two years of age so uh, uh, any factor that increases the work of breathing contributes to early fatigue of the muscles of the infant so since the type 1 muscle fibers are not developed till two years of age any uh, activity that increases the you know increases the Work of breathing will con uh, contribute to fatigue and respiratory distress. This, ex this partially explains why the infant's respiratory rate and hemoglobin desaturation is so rapid and their propensity to develop fatigue and apnea with airway obstruction. So one is the... So the larynx, so basically they, the larynx is high and anterior at the level of C4, C5. In the adults, it is at the level of C5, C6. So it is located more cephalic in their neck. It is funnel shaped in infants and it is cylindrical in adults. The narrowest level is at the cricoid cartilage and ED tube must be small enough to pass through the vocal cords but not the cricoid. Narrowest part is for the adults is at the vocal cord. So, cord. so even in an infant, even after passing through the vocal cords, the subglottic part is where the is the narrowest part. The cricoid cartilage is circular and complete. Uh, tube. So the cricoid cartilage is circular and complete. Tube nicely fits. There is no need for inflation of cuff. Laryngeal cartilages are more soft and collapsible. Right, so as you can see here, this is still more cylind this the adult is more cylindrical in shape, whereas the larynx is more funnel. So this is the funnel shape. So 
funnel shape and the adult is more cylindrical in shape. So the differences basically are infant versus adult airway difference. Newborns, the nostrils are uh, they are obligate nose breathers. The occiput is rounded. Tongue is relatively large and in relation to the or oropharynx, this increases the likelihood of airway obstruction and causes difficulty during laryngoscopy. Uh, then uh, epiglottis is omega shaped and floppy. The larynx is located at the level of C4, C5 much higher in the neck. Vocal cords slant anteriorly. The neck is short. The cord ring is a narrowest diameter. So the subglottic region is the narrowest region. So in infants or young children, the tracheal tube that easily passes the vocal cords may be tight in the subglottic region because of the greater proportional narrowing at the level of the cricoid cartilage. That's why uncuffed tracheal tubes were, are preferred for children younger than 6 years. However, now there are better tracheal tube designs uh, which uh, have been... Uh, Better tracheal tube designs where a cuff can be used, but a leak should always be maintained around the cuff because in, in injury to the tracheal mucosa is still possible. So the micro cuff tube improves the safety of cuffed tracheal tubes in children. It is very soft. The shape of the cuff is more uniform. So these are the micro cuff tubes. So they are very soft. The shape is uh, the shape of the cuff is more uniform. This allows more uniform uh, distribution of lateral seeding pressure. Uh, it is located more distally the cuff and thus perhaps beyond the cricoid cartilage. So it is located a little lower. Its formation is different so that it forms a uniform uh, seal. Mm. They are more expensive and they are generally used for children who are prone, who are sure to have a prolonged surgery. So basically for intubation, the straight male blade that is a Miller or Robichaux are generally recommended. Straight blades are very helpful in uh, neonates because in neonates there is little room to displace the tongue and soft tissues forward. Larynx is located much higher in the neck. They have short chins and necks and relatively larger tongues. Curved blades are designed to be placed between the epiglottis and the posterior pharyngeal wall, basically in a space called pallicula. They cannot displace the tongue forward or like lift the soft tissues and epiglottis to see the larynx, right? So, larynx is more anteriorly placed, more, more cephalad placed. So, the tongue, the soft tissue and the epiglottis has to be lifted so that the larynx can be visible. Heads needs to be kept in neutral position for ventilating the neonate. Sniffing the morning air position. So flexion of the lower cervical spine and extension of the atlanto axial joint. So flexion of the lower cervical spine and extension at the atlanto axial joint which is used in adults will not be helpful in neonates with bad mass ventilation or to visualize the glottis during laryngoscopy. So in... Uh, in uh, adults, basically it is a sniffing the morning sniffing position where there is flexion at the cervical joints and extension at the atlantoaxial joint. Whereas with the uh, neonate, the head needs to be kept in a neutral position for ventilating the neonate. So, as you can see, flexion at the lower cervical joint and extension at the atlanto occipital joint. So, extension at the atlanto occipital joint, atlanto action, and flexion at the neck. So, with this, the airway comes into alignment, right? So, that's when you can see the airway comes into alignment. But for a neonate, uh, basically just a roll has to be kept below the, so as you can see they have a short neck, 
and uh, mandible so the it uh, the mandible the short mandible tends to uh, obstruct the airway and the short neck bending forward so they, generally a rest is placed below the shoulders prior to intubation to align the axis The care should be taken to minimize the trauma during laryngoscopy. A minimal edema can cause tracheal obstruction because the larynx and the tracheal, trachea are are so small. So airway and respiratory system, so 1 mm circumferential edema in an adult with a 10 mm trachea causes only 44% decrease in cross-sectional area. Whereas 1 mm circumferential edema in an infant for, with a 4 mm trachea causes a 75% decrease, decrease in a cross-sectional area. So 1 mm circumferential edema, this is your edema. In an adult with a 10 mm, this is about 8 to 10 mm trachea, causes only 44% decrease. Whereas 1 mm circumferential edema in an infant with a 4 mm trachea causes a 75% decrease in cross sectional area. Airway and respiratory system continue. So, airway and respiratory system continue. So, the endotracheal tube diameter is preferred. The endotracheal tube diameter preferred for a neonate is 3 mm. Uh, 0 to 6 months is 3.5 mm, 6 to 12 months is 4 mm. Okay, so that's the size that is generally used. So, uh, 3 mm is for a neonic, 0 to 6 months is 3.5 that can be used, 6 to 12 months is 4 mm that can be used. So after the U, after, so basically, after that, so after 12 months, after 1 year, so 6 to 12, uh, 0 to 6 months is 3.5, 6 to 12 months is 4. After that, age in, four, age in years by 4 plus 4.5. Actually, it is uh, for less than 6 years. Age in years. 
by 3 plus 3.5 and more than 6 years is age in years by 4 plus 4.5. So an endotracheal tube must be inserted to the correct length so as to sit at least 1 cm above the carina and be taped securely to prevent tube dislodgement to any endobronchial into. For neonates, usually the preferred length is 10 cm at the lips. 1 year is 11, 2 years is 12. For children greater than 2 years of age, uh, the length at the lips in cm is age by 2 plus 12 in cm. So up till 2 years, for neonates it is 10, up, uh, for 1 year old it is 11 and for a 2 year old it is around 12 centimeters at the lips. It should be fixed more than 2 years, age by 2 plus 12. Always verify the endotracheal tube placement carefully, that is by confirming air entry. Uh, sounds over an infant chest and abdomen can transmit easily. So bilateral air entry should be checked for. Then esophageal intubation can be missed if not cautious. And uh, first signs of esophageal intubation is bradycardia, hypoxia and potentially cardiac arrest. So the chest wall is significantly more compliant than that of an adult. Less, less... Uh, anterior posterior and lateral thoracic expansion intercostal muscles are also weak it is less compliant the uh, intercostal muscles and the uh, uh, diaphragm also more compliant and there is not much uh, uh, strength to hold them the ribs are more horizontal and diaphragms and domes are higher than that in adults so horizontal rib arrangement prevents a bucket handle movement action seen in an adult breathing and hence limits tidal Volume. So the bucket handle uh, that is seen, this bucket handle thing that is seen with the uh, in an adult is so because of the bucket handle there is a lot of expansion of the lung but this is not seen that they are more horizontal like this so there is not much movement backward forward that is occurring and as a result this prevents uh, limits the tidal volume. So diaphragm is located at a higher level. Muscles of ventilation are easily subjected to fatigue due to lower percentage of type 1 muscle fibers in the diaphragm. So like I said, the, it develops the type 1 muscle fibers. The type 1 muscle fibers develop only by about 2 years of age. So they develop only by 2 years of age and hence the muscles are, these are the muscles which are, most, uh, I mean, more resist. They are more hardy to repetitive uh, action, and uh, they are subjected to more fatigue. They can withstand more fatigue, but they do not develop till about two years of age. So the the infants any stress they can be, uh, they can cause respiratory distress. Ventilation is primarily diaphragmatic. Improper mass ventilation can form gas in the stomach which can impinge on the contents of the chest and the diaphragm. This reduces the ability to ventilate adequately. So because there is gas in the stomach, the, the ability to ventilate too will be impaired. So the control of uh, ventilation wise, higher centers are less responsive as they are immature to various stimuli unlike in adults basically to carbon dioxide and hypoxia increase carbon di di hypercapnia and hypoxia the respiratory centers are less responsive increase a uh, carbon dioxide causes a respiratory rate increase with increased co2 so with increased co2 there's increase in rate that is seen in an adult too an increase in carbon dioxide concentration leads to a decrease in the ph of blood due to the production of hydroxyl hydro hydroxyl ions from carbonic acid. In response to a decrease in pH, the respiratory centers in the medulla send nervous impulses to the external intercostal muscles and diaphragm to increase the rate of okay? So because of that increased uh, pH, the increased hydrogen ion concentration in the respiratory centers, that is the medulla, 
the response is to increase the intercostal muscles and diaphragm, increase the rate of breathing. This can cause easy fatigue in the neonate and infant because they do not have that type 1 respiratory muscle fibers and can lead to a respiratory arrest. Airway and respiratory system a response to oxygen. Hypoxia is a biphasic response, so there will be initial hyperventilation for 30 seconds because of the peripheral uh, chemoreceptor response. After 5 minutes, there will be a respiratory ventilatory depression. So, this is all that is actually seen in an adult, and in a neonate, these are depressed to quite an extent. So, the lungs, uh, lungs basically develop from the outpouchings of the GI tract. Uh, maturation again is not complete until 8 days, 8, sorry, until 8 years of age. So, maturation of the lung is complete only by 8 years of age. Surfactant production starts at 24 day, days of gestation. So, 24 days of gestation, surfactant production by 28 weeks. Surfactant with lipoprotein begins to appear. The less than sphingomyelin ratio indicates lung maturity. More than 2 is low risk for our respiratory distress syndrome. Elastic tissue indicates that elastic tissue is poorly developed. If it is less than 2. So the less than sphingomyelin ratio indicates the lung fetal lung maturity and uh, Like I said, uh, more than two low risk of respiratory distress syndrome, elastic mm -hmm. tissue poorly developed. Developed. The neonate has limited respiratory reserve, that is the inspiratory reserve volume, expiratory reserve volume and residual volume. Spontaneous ventilation, uh, IV volume is uh, be maintained at 6 to 8 ml per kg and total lung capacity is 50 to 90 ml per kg. In ventilation is rate dependent as there is little means to increase Ideal volume. So, because of the way the ribs and all are placed, there is it depends mainly uh, the minute ventilation depends mainly on the rate because the tidal volume cannot be increased much because of the activity. So, uh, minute ventilation is tidal volume into respiratory rate, and the respiratory rate should uh, the tidal volume is normally 200 to 480 ml per minute per kg. So the minute ventilation is usually kept at 200 to 400 ml per kg per minute and the respiratory rate is 24 minus H by 2. So 24. So the minute ventilation should be kept at 24 minus H by 2. So the normal uh, Minute ventilation is 200 to 480 ml per kg per, per minute. So, in normal neonates and adults, body weight of a newborn is body weight newborn is around 3, tidal volume is around 6 ml per kg, respiratory rate around 35. Alveolar ventilation should be uh, uh, alveolar ventilation is one is ml per kg per minute is one thirty oxygen consumption is six point four as you can see the oxygen consumption is way higher than that of an adult it is almost double that of an adult total lung capacity is sixty three whereas it is eighty six in an adult functional residual capacity is almost the same vital capacity is way lower than that of an adult. Residual volume is way higher, closing capacity is also way higher, and arterial pH is around the same for both. 
so the alveolar ventilation is way higher 1.5 per kg per minute the functional residual capacity as you can see the residual uh, volume is 23 frc is almost the same is a volume of air present in the lungs at the end of partial expiration this is basically the air that prevents the fall in spo2 during apnea so it prevents so it is the uh, at the end end of a partial expiration the so this is the total lung capacity this is the tidal volume uh, the inspiratory capacity expiratory reserve volume reserve volume the vital capacity so uh, FRC is the volume of air present in the lungs at the end of passive expiration. So at the end of passive expiration, uh, the air volume in the lungs is the functional residual capacity. And this is what determines the maintaining of the saturation during So functional residual capacity is relatively low as you can see 30 ml. 25 to 30 ml per kg it decreases further with general anesthesia causing hypoxia and lung collapse so they have very less functional residual capacity they can't hold their breaths as long as an adult and this can lead to early onset hypoxia so they desaturate very fast so they should be given mean, um, management is by giving CPAP of around 5 cm of water and suctioning so when they are generally being taken under anesthesia they desaturate very fast because their functional residual capacity is very low so as they are being sedated they have a high chance of desaturating very very fast so a continuous amount of positive pressure 5 cm of water should be maintained apneas are common post-operatively particularly in the preterm because all their they basically their respiratory system is very poorly developed they are significant if they last longer than 15 seconds and are associated with desaturation or bradycardia but because it is normal to be seen but however it is significant if it lasts longer than 15 seconds and are associated with desaturations and bradycardia the alveoli are called at birth they mature only by about eight years of age they grow in size and number till about eight years of age uh, they have only 10 percent of the adult total number of alveoli and they develop only in the first eight years of life so like i said when they are born they have only 10 percent of the total number of adult alveoli The closing volume is much higher in a neonate and hence the airways tend to collapse, collapse easily during expiration plus the chest wall rigidity that is required to keep the airways open all that is not there the chest wall is highly compliant lung is highly compliant the surrounding structures do not ha have enough elasticity to maintain the airways open and hence the closing volume is quite high they collapse easily atelectasis is common in a neonate there is large number why would now why is that is because the compliant chest wall less compliant alveoli smaller alveoli less amount of surfactant and large number of underdeveloped alveoli so first of all less alveoli are there they are underdeveloped there is less amount of surfactant the compliance of the chest wall is less the lung compliance is less and the alveoli I'm sorry compliance and the chest wall compliance and lung compliance are more and the alveoli compliance are less so they tend to collapse the physiological dead space is only 30 percent of the tidal volume and is increased by the anesthetic uh, equipment so the dead space is quite high the tidal volume is six and the dead space is almost 30 percent of the tidal volume the physiological dead space first of all the tidal volume is quite i mean they are small right so it is increased so the dead space gets increased even more with the anesthetic equipment so factors which tend to increase the dead space must be minimized like your circuit your airway neck extension jaw protrusion positive pressure ventilation so uh, any factor that leading to increased dead space has to be minimized. So the potential complications that can more easily happen in an infant are they can be accidental extubations. The trachea is short and movement of the head can shift the endotracheal 
tube up or so the trachea is short and the movement of the head can shift the endotracheal tube up or down by one or two centimeters right which can be enough to malposition the tube especially in premature infants right so kinking of the endotracheal tube because it is so tiny the, th the tube is very tiny flexible thin yeah so because of too large a tidal volume or too high inflation pressures it can cause bar barotrauma and lead to pneumothorax uh, a tidal volume of 7 ml per kg in a 3 kg baby is 21 ml so if it is too high it can lead to pneumothorax kinking of the tube and accidental extubation because of movement of the tube so they are actually very high risk and a lot of care has to be taken during a neonatal surgery. Now coming to the cardiovascular system. So uh, as such this was on the respiratory. I'm sorry. Sorry. The respiratory system of the neonate. We'll start briefly with the cardiovascular system, but we will complete the rest of the topic tomorrow. So the cardiovascular system and the renal and the respiratory system are way in detail, right? So cardiovascular system wise, uh, in neonates the myocardium is. Uh, so basically in neutro most of the cardiac output is directed from the placenta across the foramen ovale into the ascending aorta that is the oxygenated blood whereas the superior vena cava carries the deoxygenated blood to both the pulmonary artery and the ductus arteriosus right. This pattern of circulation results in minimal intrauterine pulmonary blood flow so basically uh, So basically, so basically, uh, there is the lungs are not active, but at birth, a number of changes. Uh, events change hemodynamic interaction such as fetal circulation becomes an adult type of circulation right so firstly the placenta is removed from the circulation portal blood pressure falls which causes the ductus venosus to close and blood becomes oxygenated through the lungs exposure of the ductus arteriosus to this oxygenated blood closes the ductus arteriosus as, as a result of the combined effect of the lung expand expansion exposure of blood to oxygen and loss of low resistance through placental blood flow pulmonary vascular resistance decreases while peripheral vascular res resistance rapidly rises so basically because of the combined effect of lung expansion the exposure of the blood to oxygen and the loss of the low resistance uh, circulation through the placenta all cause the pulmonary resistance to decrease so the systemic vascular resistance can increase so the decrease in the pulmonary vascular resistance occurs in the first day of life and continues to decrease for the first several years right so they base so basically in neonates the myocardium is less contractile causing the ventricles to be less compliant and less able to generate tension during uh, contraction so the muscle fibers are not well developed so they cannot generate enough tension in the ventricles during contraction this limits so the stroke volume size is limited so the cardiac output again depends on the heart right because of the less compliant less um, uh, contractile nature of the ventricles the cardiac output depends on the heart rate like the type like the minute ventilation depends on the respiratory rate because the tidal volume is very limited here also the cardiac output depends on the heart rate Okay, so the cardiac output is therefore rate dependent and the infant behaves as with the fixed stroke volume state 
okay so fixed stroke volume state it is dependent on the rate it is difficult to maintain cardiac output in hypovolemia and heart rate goes very high so cardiac output is generally 300 to 400 ml per kg per minute at birth and 200 per ml per kg per minute within the first few months of life so cardiac output is 300 to 400 ml per kg per minute in an adult it is 70 ml per kg per minute this in neonates decreases to 90 ml per kg per minute blood pressure at birth is around 50 to 65 and it reaches adult value by 12 years of age so the systolic blood pressure at birth is around 50 to 60 millimeter of mercury and it increase, reaches adult value by 12 years of age the parasympathetic tone is more dominant the sympathetic innervation is still incomplete adrenal stores are inadequate so there is poor control of capacitance vessels baroreceptors reflexes are inactive so neonates are more prone to bradycardias because of this so basically the sympathetic tone is not yet complete adrenal stores are less plus there is the baroreceptor reflexes are inactive and the parasympathetic system is way stronger so there is more chance of these little babies getting bradycardia so bradycardia since the entire cardiac cardiac output is rate dependent this bradycardia ultimately ends up in a reduced cardiac output which will result in an arrest so bradycardia that is associated with hypoxia should be treated with 100 percent oxygenation and ventilation so rate should be increased and 100 percent oxygenation so external cardiac compression will be required in a new need with a heart rate of less than 60 beats per minute. So bradycardia developing up to 60 beats per minute in a neonate will definitely warrant CPR. So CPR should be given if the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute. Immediate 100% uh, oxygen and atropin should be given since it is rate dependent. So atropin they are responsive. Uh, 0 0.02 mg per kg should be given uh, no response in chest compressions and uh, so if there is a drop in heart rate first 100% oxygenation and atropin if there is no response to atropin then chest compression should be started and adrenaline 5 to 10 microgram per kg given most arrest due to hypoxemia or anesthetic overdose sinus arrhythmias are common all other irregular rhythm is abnormal so any irregular rhythm is abnormal sinus arrhythmias might be might be common but any other irregular rhythm is abnormal so this is where we will end for today we will continue this class tomorrow the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system in a neonate have a lot of changes uh, this is just briefly I've told you all about the cardiovascular the respiratory of course we have discussed in way more detail but this was uh, briefly about the cardiovascular changes that I have told and what has to be done in a CPR and uh, it is very important to remember that the minute ventilation depends on the respiratory rate and uh, the, cardi the cardiac output of course depends on the the minute ventilation depends on the respiratory rate and the cardiac output depends on the uh, heart rate right so because in the respiratory rate the tidal volume because of the bucket handle movement of the ribs is not there the lung cannot expand much so the tidal volume is very limited whereas with uh, with the what you call it uh, um, with the cardiac output the stroke volume is limited because of the underdeveloped myocardium so the contractility of the ventricles is not there so the cardiac output depends entirely cannot depend on the stroke volume as in adults it depends entirely on the heart so we will continue this class tomorrow do use my code to subscribe do use my code s a s h a to subscribe and avail your in percent discount are you guys subscribe 
uh, hopefully I will see you all this evening I am conducting a small quiz on oxygen therapy devices at around 5 30 do log in so that uh, you all can uh, refer to the quiz and uh, at least uh, to, uh, to uh, you know you all can log on and uh, See you all soon. Do use my code.